Well, we're here tonight to talk about the April 2nd, 2019 uh, strong bonds, bright futures bond issue that the Raytown C2 School District is going to put on the ballot or has put on the ballot along with another question that we'll get into a little bit as we move forward. But kind of tonight on the agenda side of things, we want to talk a little bit about what we did in 14, uh, some of those projects, the bond language in 19, and I'm not going to go through each, each uh, project. We have a nice uh, row of placards back there of, the, of all the buildings and the things that are going to be done, but I'm going to speak in themes, in general terms of what we went after and the process and how we came and landed to where we're at today. Um, talk a little bit about some of the projects by buildings uh, and then as we move forward, as we're going down the road. Okay. In 2014, and we will also have times for questions at the end, and if you have a question, raise your hand and we'll address it right then and there. That's okay, this is very informal, uh, and we wanna kinda have an interaction in that, in that way. In 2014, we had the refresh Raytown Schools No Tax Increase Bond Issue, $22 million. Uh, many of the projects you can see here, how the money was spent. Um, you can see from electrical, restroom, security, painting, Intercom systems, one of the bigger items was the South High Stadium, plumbing and piping, roofing and technology, percentage wise and how that money was spent across the board. You can see where we ended up getting $25 million spent in that issue. Uh, it was a $22 million issue by the times we sold the bonds and the premiums on the bonds ended up a little over $25 million in revenue. Now what did we do? Well we did a lot of things, a lot of things you, you won't see, electrical, water lines, uh, roofs, things like that, but some things you would see. And this is a picture um, of subway tile, and it comes in two colors, yellow and green. In the 1950s when these schools were built, this is what was installed in the hallways, in the bathrooms, things like that. So we made some changes, certainly in a majority of the bathrooms in the district, and if you have not been to South High in the last three, three, four years, um, we did this throughout the building in South High and it made it look brand new. They look like this now. And this is an epoxy finish, just an example um, that you have to spray. You can't, that glazed tile, you can't paint it. Uh, the only way you can change the look of it is by spraying this epoxy on it or just tearing it out. So we did that and new fixtures in a lot of the, in the restrooms in the, in the district. Roofs throughout the district. Electronic signs throughout the district. One of the bigger and, and, and pretty costly across the district, but each elementary building, prior to the bond issue, many of them, you, when you walk through the door, you were in the school. You could go right, you could go left down the hallways, and you had access to all classrooms at that point. And over the years now, you know, since 1998 was really when uh, school safety became in our front of our eyes and, and hit us in the face with Columbine, we began to think of ways, well, how can we make our schools safer? SROs, metal detectors, etc. So one thing we thought, well, it would be good if we could funnel that traffic that's coming in from the outside through the office. And we were able to do that at all the elementary schools in this bond issue in 2014. Um, the two sister schools, if, you, if you've been to, and we have many sister schools in the district, with Spring Valley and Norfleet, uh, their entrances are the same and those glass doors bring you right into the office. You cannot get into the building. One of the more challenging ones was two of the sister schools, Laurel Hills and Fleet Ridge. Uh, those buildings, when you walk in, the office is in the middle of the building. So you have to walk in to get to that office, or it used to be. So we had to move the office from that space up to a front classroom and switch the classroom there. So now you go through the office in the front of that building, in both buildings. So those projects were done. And then the South High Stadium project and turf baseball fields, we had some money left over and we were able to do those as well. Any questions on any of that? Again, there's electrical you wouldn't see. We spent almost $2 million at South High on water lines uh, because they were galvanized pipe when they were put in and they had lived their life. Uh, so just things of that nature that you wouldn't see, just r routine uh, renovation and maintenance. First question, $53 million bond issue, 
projects as safety and security improvements, district facilities, roof improvements, upgrades to our performing arts centers at both high schools and all of our middle schools, um, and then acquisition of school facilities currently leased by the district, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. But it is a no tax increase. Now, if it doesn't pass, the question is asked, will our taxes go down? And the answer to that is no, because we're currently paying on bonds from previous issues that are still being paid out the seven, eight, nine years moving forward. So the rate is going to remain the same to pay the principal and interest on those bonds. But it will remain the same as six, total levy of $6.32 to uh, raise $53 million. Now, what does the $53 million get us? Approximately $42 million in renovations, and we're going to talk a little bit about some of that here in a minute. And then we also have about $11 million in lease purchases out there. We want to move into long-term debt. The Wellness Center is one of those. The District Warehouse, and if you don't know where that's at, the old District Warehouse used to be, used to be about 250 yards this way, down the hill where the Walmart was. That's where Herndon used to be. And when that was traded with the city, it lost Herndon and lost the warehouse. Herndon moved up the road, but there wasn't space for a warehouse. So we accessed a building on Blue Ridge. It's an old, I, they tell me it was an old IGA. It's right next to the McDonald's, uh, right there on Blue Ridge or Safeway or whatever it was. We were able to get that as a district warehouse. We uh, acquired three trails to open up our four-year-old preschool for all four-year-olds in Raytown and the renovation and purchase of that through lease purchase and then some other renovations across the district. By moving that over, that frees up money that we're, we're spending in capital to pay those lease per, or the lease principal and interest, and those will kick in in 2020, tuned to about $1.2 million a year. Okay. Second question, shall the Board of Education, and I won't read it verbatim, uh, of Jackson County, Missouri be authorized to increase operating property tax levy by 0.1389 cents per $100 of assessed valuation for the purpose of paying general operating expenses of the district. So we have four school funds in school finance, okay? Fund one is the operating fund. That goes to pay teachers, that goes to pay for electricity, that goes to pay for general operating expenses throughout the day and throughout the year in the district. Fund two is the teacher's fund. Now, backing up to fund one, the operating fund has a levy, has a dedicated levy of $5.02, okay, roughly. The teacher's fund does not. We have a fund three of debt service. That's where we pay. We can only pay for bonded indebtedness, meaning we can only pay for money that we borrow to build buildings or do renovations, et cetera. And then there's fund four, which is capital projects, and that pays for things like this right here, desks, uh, district trucks, buses, things like that. How do we get money to pay for our teachers? Well, we transfer money out of operations into the teacher fund to pay for our salary and benefits, okay? And when we need capital project money, we also transfer that out of operations over into capital projects, okay? A very crude lesson in school finance. It is much more detailed than that, and there's a lot of, a lot of intricacies to it. So what we're asking you as voters to do is take 13 cents Whoop, went the wrong way. Out of this fund and move it up into operating. Okay? And that's a simple majority vote of the community. Whereas the bond issue is a four sevenths vote. So simple majority and 57% for the bond issue. So we're asking that money to be moved up. The, the levy remains the same at $6.32. And we can continue to increase our salary schedule, be competitive, et cetera, that, things that we need to do. Uh, to stay a, a strong district. How did we get here for all these projects? How did, did, did uh, the Board of Education do it? Was it just the administration team? Was it a group of teachers? Uh, was it just members of the community? And the answer to that question, or those questions is yes, 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 and yes, all together. We asked our architects, Hollis and Miller, to do a facilities update for us Years ago, we had one done. Uh, we identified about $80 million in need. Uh, Mr. Toto, you were on the board, I think, at that time. We did that study, and they came back and parted our hair with that kind of money that it was going to cost. 
So we couldn't do $80 million in 2014. We didn't have the bonding capacity to do so. So we went through and we looked at what's critical. What do we need to do? Okay. We kind of took that same approach again. We asked them to go back and take a look and see what we need to do in the district. And these themes kind of came out of that. We want to, what do we need to do for safety and security? What can we do in some upgrades and repairs? And how can we enhance our learning environments? So they went out and they walked every building in the district. They got up on roofs, looked at our roofs with our operations our, or our maintenance facility folks to see what needed to be done, what was critical, what's not. They visited with teachers in the buildings, asked them what their needs were and asked them what their wants were at the same time, teachers, building principals, et cetera, and came back with quite a list. So from that point, we engaged the Citizens Advisory Committee to sit down and let's start going through each building and what's important to you. We asked them what's important to you. And they may or may not have a student in this building. They may or may not have a student in this district. But we asked them what's important to you. So they began the process of ident identifying those most important needs. From there, it was sent to the Board of Education in their study sessions. And we asked the board, not knowing, the board not knowing what the Citizen Advisory Committee had recommended, go through and see what you think is our most critical needs. At that point, we brought all that data back together and combined it, and here's what we got. Here's the, here's the things that, that uh, had the most hits, if you want to put it that way. Here's the things that, that people uh, uh, identify that this is what we need to do. So the themes being safety and security, upgrades and repairs, enhanced learning environments. Now you're going to see throughout all of these placards in the elementary schools, and I'm just going to hit on a few of these, playground turf. Well, what is that? Okay, what is playground turf? Well, if you've been on one of our elementary playgrounds, and you know underneath all the jungle gyms, like over at Norfleet, uh, where my, son, my last son is going through, where my first two boys went through, uh, underneath the playground, all of our playgrounds have these little black tiles that are about that thick, right? And they're cushioning for kids that fall. Uh, it's supposed to, to eliminate some of the more serious injuries that they may get. Well, to replace those, and it's shocking the number, that's a half a million dollar cost just to replace one, okay? So we asked for some alternatives and our architects began doing the research and many districts throughout the country are now using something called playground turf. A lot similar to what you see on some of the ball fields, football fields, et cetera, but mixed with sand and at a much more reasonable cost and will last longer. We were noticing that some of these playground tiles after two years of being in the sun were shrinking and, and separating and pretty soon they're no good. And we're replacing tile after tile. So we hope that's a good investment. Many interior door replacements throughout the district, lighting upgrades. This one came um, in a pretty high number of, of needs and wants and what people wanted more information were uh, on these electronic door accesses. But if you've been in any of our buildings, you know you can't get in if you're an employee you have a badge that you can take and hit the, uh, the light and it opens the door. Um, we have many buildings throughout the district that we, all of them have this, but they wanted more of these. Uh, case and example, and I, the reason I say this, because I see the shirt on Dr. Huff back there in the back, Happy Camper, that's a Little Blue uh, Elementary uh, t-shirt he's wearing proudly. But Little Blue, this is a good example of where these are needed, sits out here on 61st Street and Nolan Road. Okay, on the very east side of the district, outside of the Raytown PD, okay, and a far distance from any KC PD. So they're out, the response time to get to that building is going to be longer, much also like uh, Westridge and also like Eastwood, possibly. Um, that building, if you can imagine, on the west side, if you haven't seen it, uh, an expansive play, playground area and field, anytime there's an active maybe a car chase uh, by KCPD or someone's, there's a threat, et cetera. Teachers trying to get all those kids back into the classroom and try and, or into the building to get into a lockdown procedure and try to fumble with a key at the door. We know that is, that's more time and more time for them to where they need to be. So we're adding them throughout the district, okay, through many of the different buildings. South High, for example, South High over, has over 60 exterior doors, okay? And we have to have certain areas where we can get kids back into the building in a, in a timely manner.
Um, tuck pointing, if you don't know, and you're going to see that as you work through these things. Uh, tuck pointing is where if you have brick on your house, you notice over time, as it settles, the mortar separates. And a lot of our buildings are, have brick on them. And Blue Ridge is a good example right here. And it's completely brick for the most part. So going in and fixing that mortar and just preserving uh, the credibility of that building for more and more years to come. Okay? This one's gonna, this cost here may escalate this year. Um, as you've seen the stories on TV or maybe you've, uh, you've experienced some of the potholes that are out there, we're going to have them uh, with the winter that we had. We already have some, but it's gonna be exacerbated because of the weather that we've had. Gym upgrades, media center upgrades, you'll see that on many of the elementary schools as well and the middle schools on the media center upgrades. What does that mean? Well, it, can mean a it might mean something different at whatever building you were at. And when we started meeting with the media specialists, asking them, what do you need? Okay, what, what do you need to enhance the learning environment? Some of them may say, we need new library furniture. Okay, well, that's, that's what we'll do. Some may, we'd, we'd like more paint, we'd like new carpet, et cetera. So there was a lot of input given by a lot of staff members. Okay, again, I'm just gonna flow through these if I see something that's not, um, that we haven't discussed. We're gonna start this process throughout the door, Inter interior flooring replacement. If you've been over to Central Middle School, and this is a picture of Fleet Ridge, and Laurel Hills looks just exactly like it, except the name's different on the front. Um, interior flooring replacement, uh, some of that is asbestos removal. Okay, we have a lot of nine by nine inch tile in this district. When these buildings were built in the 1950s, um, asbestos tile was the rage, so to speak, okay? Plus it was fireproof, but in its removal today, we're finding out some of the problems with asbestos and it can become expensive to do so. But we're doing interior, whenever it chips, and bigger pieces chip out of it, we have to replace it, okay? We're, uh, the scrutiny of, of how, you re how you remove that and how you replace it is, um, can sometimes be very intense. Something you'll see down here at the bottom in many of the elementary schools. For almost a year now, we've been offering at the middle school and high school levels something called after school meals, okay? With uh, the Missouri Department of Senior Services, uh, we've been able to partner with them. Every student in the Raytown School District at, at those grade levels, six through 12, can walk towards their bus by the cafeteria, pick up a meal to take home at no charge. And we actually get reimbursed uh, by offering that service where it's become more of a revenue generator for us. Well, now we wanna go down into our elementary schools. We have 70% of our children are living in poverty, okay? And we believe this is a service that, that it's going to enhance one revenues, but it's also gonna be sending kids home uh, with a meal that they may not be getting. And that's, we think that's important. So you're gonna, we, with that being said, we need that additional freezer space because we're gonna have more food in these buildings. More of the lighting upgrades, windows, Less obviously at Little Blue Elementary because it is between it and New Trails are the newest of the buildings that we have. And you'll see some of these things down here are different in the enhanced learning environment and that's coming back from the input from members of staff, that building administrator, parents that may be in that, have children in that school uh, that are giving recommendations. Poxy on corridor walls like we did at South High. Dr. Markley, back on Robinson, one of the things that we saw with this one's a little different, um, I think it was Robinson, um, with the two classrooms, yes, down there at the mm. bottom, that um, those are ones that are not being used now, is that correct? Correct. Yeah, those two classrooms are down by the cafeteria uh, on the bottom, on the west side of the building. Uh, those classrooms aren't being used, and the teachers over there and the building administrator felt like they could be utilized for, for different Art, art activities, things like that, where they don't necessarily have the space now. Um, and also we've, um, we've incorporated elementary choir uh, in our buildings and we have more kids getting interested in that. So those are some of the things they can also use that area for um, uh, elementary orchestra, et cetera. So 
uh, those two classrooms that were just basically being used for storage are now going to be classrooms. Again, not to talk about all these things because many of them are the same. If you have questions, ask me, but I don't want to be redundant with you and be respectful of your time. Um, there's another additional freezer space uh, in the kitchen uh, for Spring Valley, and you can see the different here, a furniture upgrade uh, at that. S several, almost all of those classrooms over there are going to see new desks, new chairs, etc. throughout the building. Just out of curiosity, why would one school have so much need for furniture when none of the others do? That's kind of interesting. Well, that's a good question, and I think maybe the best way to answer that is, depending on you might have a building like Spring Valley that's had about three or four different principals over the last, say, 15 years. And as they put requests for needs and things that they want, furniture may have been farthest from their mind. All of a sudden, we have a new administrator that looks at, we need new furniture, okay? And their request is different. And that's, I think that's the explanation for that building. What year was it that Raytown District did a bond issue? Was that 2011? The last one? Yeah. 2014. Yes. Okay, so my only question is this. Uh, has that issue been paid off by the district already, or is the district still in debt from that? They are. It's, well, that bond issue was issued on a 20-year note to be paid off in 20 years. Okay. Will this be added to that, or is this? It, it will be added. This one will start. Let's say we sell the bonds. Um, say if we pass the issue and we sell them about June, okay? You can figure, you know, roughly, that's June of 19, we might start paying the interest on those in the summer of 2020, roughly, depending on where we sell them. And then you figure 20 years from that point, okay? And I think I know, Ruff, I think I know where your question may be going here. You're figuring how can, we have, how can we pay that with the bonds we already have that we're paying and paying this, am I going down the right road? Yeah, that's part of it, I guess, I, I'm concerned. I mean, you know, I, I have a sixth grader and I have an 11th grader, but um, I am concerned that long past your time here that the district may be on the hook for a lot of this borrowed money because, and you know, in any kind of bankruptcy proceeding, I'm not saying that the district will do that, but the bondholders are using that kind of first dips, right, mm -hmm. off the top. So that's really my only concern is, is that does um, um, I know it, in the big scheme of things, it's not a lot of money, but it's still a lot of money. Oh, it's a lot of money. Here, it's a lot here, of money. You know, it's, it's talking real money, and it's just one of those things that um, I, I, and I know that a lot of upgrades and repairs were made then. Uh, so 2014, this is 2019, so five years. Um, and after this one, are we going to really focus on paying them off or five or six years down the road, the architects will come in and say, oh, we need to. Well, let me tell you this. That's a great question. And first of all, I think financially, um, we feel pretty confident that down the road, we're going to be able to continue to pay that even at minimal growth, conservative growth of the district's tax base. Okay. A levy set at this at this rate, a good interest rate that we get on paying these bonds locked in, uh, and we're not doing this out. This is c advice coming from our bond council as well. But I think it's easy to answer the question: Are we going to need another one down the road? Because fifty-three million dollars here is what we've asked for. The critical needs is up over or critical needs. The I'd say the needs plus the combined of the wants. Uh, is over 127 million. Okay, I'd mentioned earlier that in 2014 that we identified 80 million dollars in needs slash wants, and we were only able to chip away at about 25 million of that. So, I think the answer to your question: In five years, as the district moves along, moves along as buildings that are 50 plus years old, Raytown High is 100 years old in some places of that building. There's going to be more renovations need, needed. Just to, just to keep the integrity of the buildings, just like you would do your home, uh, your roof, et cetera. You know, we're not doing all the roofs in this, okay? And we won't ever do all the roofs in a bond issue because 
in 20 years, you'll be doing them all again. Okay, we try to split those up. Let's do half now. We'll do more the next round. We even do some during the year out of our regular capital projects budget. But rather than spend all that money at that one time, the next bond issue all we'd be doing is roofs again. So we split those projects up. I don't know if that answers your question, but that's, that's probably, in my time here, uh, let's hope it's as long as uh, the school board, and there's many of them here who want to keep me, but um, it's, it doesn't matter if I'm here or someone else, there's going to be a need um, as we move forward, just because of the, the age of our buildings. He's, he's asking a really good question, and I want to move it, shift it just a little bit. The, as I recall, there is a, uh, a ceiling, which you, the amount of money you can borrow relative to the assessed valuation of your community. And I don't remember what that this this is we got 56 million on the books now we got 54 54 and some, or 53 and some change that's 110 now how does that compare to the ceiling is that for this it's called bonding capacity, bonding capacity. and boss the way you get bonding capacity is it's 15 percent of your total assessed valuation yeah. so let's say we're a billion we're a billion dollars we're not but let's say we were that'd be 150 million that we could go out and ask the voters to approve Okay, and as you grow, say you go from a billion to 1.1 billion, 15 percent, you've grown, you've grown another 15 million dollars as that works. When we pass this one, it will take us to our capacity. Yes, and as we move forward, we have figured roughly a oh, 1.5 percent conservative growth of assessed valuation, meaning our local tax base growing 1.5 percent for the next 10 years. We know that's pretty conservative. We figure it's going to be more than that, but historically that's where we try to fall. As it continues to grow and increase, and as we pay down debt, uh, the old bond issues, and we start paying this down, then our bonding capacity increases again. Okay? Right, the risk is that it flips and that we go through a recession or something calamitous mm -hmm. like that, and the bonding capacity shrinks now we're open and so these other needs we got to be really sure about these needs because in that situation or in a slow growth situation we don't have any room right 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 and we have his issue that that we have to get we got to pay off 110 million so we got to be really sure that uh, we can fund that through the taxpayers contributions on their property tax bill and that it is a risk um, a risk that, um, you know, you don't want to say, well, it's a risk we're willing to take. We can't predict the future. We don't know when the next housing crisis is going to be. Uh, but we know that a majority of these projects here uh, are going to have to get done sooner or later to keep the integrity of the buildings uh, and to continue, one, for safety, two, for uh, the learning environment and what we can do to produce kids that are learning well, reading well, et cetera. Um, so moving forward, we think these are the needs that we have so far. I mean, there's more. Uh, there's very, very low risk because even in 14, we were still coming out of the throes of a recession where our valuation was greatly reduced, and we were still able to increase our bonding capacity by 25 million dollars. So right. Even coming out of a recession and low valuation, we were still able to increase our capacity. So it's a very low risk. That's why we sell our bonds at such good prices. Yeah, that and the credit rating, etc. But I think that. Um, I think our, from what we're hearing on the assessor side of things and looking at the, 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 the sale of homes in our district, uh, we're seeing an uptick right now, short term maybe, I don't know. But we're starting to see that, you know, I don't, did, we, did we hit bottom in the housing crisis? You know, I remember you and I were having discussions about it four or five years ago that this thing is deeper than what it really was and it turned out to be that way. Uh, but have we started to, to come out of that? Um, you know, sales of homes in our area uh, would suggest that. Certainly sales of homes out around us suggest that because whether it be the, the housing market, uh, the inventory has gone way down at this point and the prices are going up, etc. But at the same time, I see you, Mr. Peters. Up, thank you. <laughs> it's good to see you, Mr. Peters. So that's something. We think these are the needs to answer the question. We think these are the things that need to get done and get us maybe to our next one. Yeah. And then, and then we it's, it's a financing question. 
Okay. Okay. Um, and it's concerning to the public that they're looking at it as an either or situation. If, if you know, what is it if we if question one does not pass? What does it do to my taxes? And you know what I'm what I'm reading here is that uh, if it doesn't pass, the district's levy the district levy would remain at 632 for a period of seven to nine years, which would mean that at that point we probably would have most, if not all, the debt paid. And if we this doesn't pass, we'd have nominal amount of debt, if any, and so that rate would probably go down. I, I guess yeah, the levy. A nominal number, so. right? But it's an all or nothing deal. You, you don't get these buildings replaced. But if the, those taxpayers are saying, I'm taxed where I can't to my limit and I can't afford anything more, the argument is in 10 years, six to 10 years, your taxes would go down. It would start to go down. Uh, you're talking about 2000 issue. That's, that's pretty close. Okay. okay. And if you remember from some of your time, we did a lot of refinancing right. of those bonds uh, from 2000 and roughly 10 to 13, 14, and got some really great rates and refinancing of those bonds, yeah. which has helped created this bonding capacity as well, because we're paying the principal and interest down quicker because of that lower rate, uh, and created the no tax increase side of it as well. So it will start to start to go down as in the seven, eight years, et cetera, depending. And unless we go back and we get a, a, another rate to refinance, just depending on many different factors that could happen. So, but not trying to predict the future of that. So, okay. Middle schools. Raytown Middle School, again, guided entry. Uh, one thing that we didn't do in 2014 was create the guided entries at the secondary buildings, at the high schools and the middle schools, just because we couldn't afford to do so at that point with the money that we had. Uh, and the middle schools and the high schools create a larger problem as far as trying to corral into the office because there's such big spaces. Uh, imagine if you've ever been into Raytown High School, okay? We enter from the east side, okay, because that's where our parking's at. Uh, we have an SRO at the front of all these buildings, okay? That's why we don't necessarily have a, a security entrance at this point because we, it was more frugal to do it with staff at that point. But now we want to add that safety and security piece just because the multitude of events that have happened all over the country and also uh, to provide a safer, safer environment for our kids. So safety and security, guided entries at all the buildings. Raytown High will be probably the most difficult uh, to navigate just because the entrance is on the east side uh, and we can't park on Blue Ridge Boulevard. Uh, different things in that building, just repair, roofs, um, band and choir renovations, that's a large one. We have seen our band program starting to grow in the middle schools. And this is an area that we haven't touched in the last, since I've been here in 11 years, uh, when it comes to storage for kids' equipment, for the number of kids that are in there. Uh, we need to improve on that side of things. So we're going to improve the band and choir rooms at that school. Also um, at Central Middle doing the same with band room renovations. Um, upgrades to our stages, uh, guided entry. Now, if you've ever been into Central Middle, it's kind of like Fleet Ridge and Laurel Hills. When you walk through the front doors, the office is across the hall in the middle of the building. And we're, we're gonna flip-flop it to the side, so now you have to go through the office and the classrooms will be streamed down that side of the, of the building. Um, cafeteria upgrade. Uh, if you've ever been in that building, the cafeteria is downstairs and it has room for about 100 kids, 150 kids, uh, and kids are passing through there at the same time going to classes, um, we're going to expand that cafeteria out and make it a little bit bigger. And then also the different upgrades, et cetera, for the, uh, the band and media centers. Raytown South Middle, guided entries as well. It will be a little bit easier because the office is right up there on the front side, and we'll be able to go right in through there so that the cost there is a little bit lower. Um, band room addition and choir room relocation. We're actually going to build an additional space on to the back side of that building. Uh, right now the band room is downstairs uh, and they have very little space to work with. Uh, we're seeing the band grow at Raytown South. We have a great uh, band director over there 
Uh, she's doing a great job and we're going to continue to support the middle school and building that room up on the top. Some more space for those kids. Raytown High, tuck pointing again, electronic door accesses, epoxy on the walls, band and choir room renovations. Um, this, again, Raytown High, this part right here, I don't know, is this, this is the building that's 100, is 100 years old, right there, right in the middle, over 100, okay? Um, if you can imagine with, with me, back here is the, imagine the, um, the auditorium, and then on the north or west side of that is the band wing. The problem with, with uh, trying to expand that is, is it is covered to the west by Blue Ridge Boulevard. We can't go out to the, to the west and we can't go out to the south because of 61st Street. But we are going to go in and with the help of the band instructors and choir directors, we're going to upgrade that and make that a more usable space for them. Uh, and we're excited about that. Okay. And what will really be interesting to see if the issue passes and we get this done, but all these windows here are going to be new windows. Uh, and some of these windows are, some of these windows, they're not original, 100 years, but some of them are 30 and 40 years old and haven't been replaced. Okay, South High, different upgrades and repairs. Um, guided entry once again, media center, band room upgrades, auditorium upgrades. Uh, uh, needed in that in that facility that's a big number 1.3 million but it hasn't been touched since since I've been here and I think it's more than 20 years anything's been then it hasn't had much attention paid to it but uh, we are noticing that uh, some of the upgrades over there need to be done along with uh, some work to the locker rooms structural repairs etc okay Herndon a few renovations over there upgrades and repairs to cosmetology roofs uh, culinary space improvements. Um, last year, our kids won the national championship in culinary. Uh, three kids from South, one from Raytown High. Each one of those kids received a $200,000 scholarship to go to a culinary school. Well, guess what? They just won the state championship again, uh, and they're headed back to the national uh, tournament. So we're excited about that. But improving their space a little bit. You know, if you're a culinary student, you'd argue this is a need. If you're not, you would argue that this is probably a want, okay? Uh, so we are going to, uh, in this issue, on the Herndon campus, and imagine if you will, uh, when you turn in the Herndon campus off of 350, you turn into a building that's not currently being used by the district. Uh, it looks like a convenience store without gas pumps, okay? That is where the new Herndon learning space will go and it's actually going to be a restaurant and a business that the kids are going to eventually run. Um, it will be eventually open up to the public in certain times, but it's a classroom space for the kids and it'll look like a restaurant. Something similar to what Olathe has and Shawnee Mission. Um, and we're gonna set our kids up uh, to begin that process. And we're back to the number. This number's probably a little high because we'll be able to secure vocational enhancement grants through the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education for the equipment, um, the hoods, the ovens, et cetera. Uh, for career exploration, DESE pays you 75 cents on the dollar for that equipment. So we'll, roughly we're thinking we may save close to a million dollars just on equipment and bringing the price of that down. New trails, just safety and security items, more roof work, playground, Reeseway repairs. And then Northwood, uh, again, another building that's over 50 years old. If you've been past Northwood lately, you notice that we replaced all the windows last summer uh, in this building and really dressed this, this building up. And then our three trails, preschool, some different things that we want to do to that building, boiler upgrades, etc. And then lastly, our wellness center, uh, HVAC improvements uh, on top of the building. Um, that has begun to deteriorate. We need to replace those units. So let's ask some questions. Um, a lot of stuff, a lot of items. I mean, we've we got these meetings, but we're not getting attendance. <laughs> so is there any way when we can have, like we go to the people, like instead of the people coming to us, is there any way when we can uh, go to the community or maybe churches or what have you, but we just need to get the word out? 
this is just one of the many things that we're and that we're having people uh, opportunity to attend. Um, we're meeting with Kiwanis. We're meeting with Rotary. Um, I think I'm not sure when I'm meeting with the Pastoral Alliance, but that's coming up uh, Thursday. Um, I'm meeting with the Silver Sneakers uh, over at the Wellness Center to help educate them on the issues and answer any questions. So we're getting out, and it's not just me. Members of the team, Danielle and Steve and Travis and Kim, are all getting out to the different groups uh, to relay the information that we have and to answer any questions we have. That way they can be informed before they go to the polls. Just out of curiosity, how many students are involved in that culinary program? Because I've heard more conversation about that and mm -hmm. the viability of a restaurant. And well, they only, have, they only have space for 34 kids roughly, 17 in the morning, 17 in the afternoon. They have upwards of 80 that apply for it. Okay, so as we increase our space, we'll increase our enrollment. And each one of those kids are the districts that are sending those kids from Independence, Lee Summit, uh, Center, uh, Grandview, etc. They are paying roughly $4,500 tuition for the kids to come and, and... I was going to ask about that. How many students roughly of the 80 come from, if, there, if you could accept that roughly are right town versus outside districts? Just a guess. Uh, I'd say at least half, about half of them. Culinary is popular, cosmetology is popular, welding is popular, um, and auto mechanics is popular, extremely popular over at Herndon. The, the issue of safety and security, it, it, help me on this, because there are, there are uh, people in the community are saying, you know, playground turf, that's a lot of money. And so, it, and, and you can counter that question by saying, the, by making the emotional argument, you know, kids, it's easier to fall on the softer turf than it is on the cement that we all fell on when we were kids. Mm. Uh, and but can, do you have any hard data that says in the in the world of of serious security incidents, uh, the the interior, the you know the um, change in the entrance will, will will mitigate that number of cases and and the risk of injury. And in, and do you have any data that says that the turf will mitigate the number of circumstances that have occurred where kids are injured and the like and out of school. I mean, do you have that kind of data or do you, or do we have the emotional side which is Columbine and kids get hurt? Help me with that. Well, let's start with the security and Travis is here. Travis, you want to respond to that? Right, well, the goal of the uh, guided entry is to have a single secure point of entry so you know who's in your building. And that, that's really what that's about. Gone are the days when you can just walk in, the, in any one of the 60 doors in South High get in. We need to know who's there so that we can deal with who's there. So that's what that's for. That, you know, having that guided entry, uh, its sole goal is not to prevent a school shooting. Mm -hmm. it's, it's security related. It's okay. guided entry, single point of entry, so you can <laughs> control access and know who's there. On the playground turf, if you go by any of our schools, we have the uh, rubber, uh, rubber tiles under the playground. And those were done in the 06 bond issue, I think. And uh, their lifespan is over. Okay, so we looked at replacing those rubber tiles in this, and it was twice as much as what you see there. So we looked at putting in the turf that you see a lot of you know, uh, community playgrounds now that uh, that looks like turf, which is half the cost. Mm -hmm. So, those tiles are done and need to be replaced. And again, due to the cost of replacing them one for one with what existed, we looked at this turf option as a fall protection. Fall protection is required for playgrounds. It's not something we can decide if we want or not mm -hmm. want. And then you, we do have injuries. You know, kids get hurt on playgrounds and so on. And those are very costly. And you may. I think you were on board back when we bought $25,000 worth of ladders mm -hmm. because that purchase of a ladder in every classroom was cheaper than one work count plan. And so part of it is, you know, when you have this, one, we have to, you know, the state guidelines require us to have fall protection and so on. Okay. Two, the cost of the, uh, to our insurance is expensive when kids look at her. That's a good answer. And then, then the last question. And I'm out of here. That's a unique way. I mean, it's a very interesting way to help us on the cash, the, the budget issue. 
but is there a is there a ceiling on question two, the amount of money, the, the flipping of the debt service levy into the operating levy? Is is there a ceiling? Is there a limit there? Yeah. Or are there other opportunities? There there is a ceiling. There's actually two. Uh, two things that affect that ceiling. One is the voters years ago approved a tax rate ceiling of five dollars and fifteen cents. Right. And to go beyond that, they would have the district would have to go back and ask the board, say, or ask the community, right. uh, we need to go to 525, right. okay? So there is a ceiling of 515. The other piece of it is the Hancock Amendment. Right. And as we grow assessed value-wise, the ceiling, even though it's 515, as we grow, it pushes that operating levy back okay. uh, under generally around the CPI, Consumer Price Index. That's kind of that percentage okay. that it drops. Uh, the board could vote if, generally if it's going up, the board's not voting to raise the levy, okay? The board could at any time just about, you know, raise the levy to 515. If they, but that's only occurring, Hancock only allows them to do that when the assessed value is tanking. Okay. Okay. So, so to say it differently, you, you've done the, all you can do on shifting the debt levy into the operating levy under current circumstances. Correct. Okay. Correct. Uh, authorized under the law. Right, okay. Yeah. Rick? Back on tax again, sir, we might want to emphasize that a little bit more, like on the perk that we're, something we're required to do. Mm -hmm. uh, because even if the bond doesn't pass, we're still going to be required to have fall protection, like you're saying. Right. So we're going to be in a bad place if we have to spend this much money without the bond passing. So, you know, it's not like the days of jungle gyms, which we all love and fell off of. But, you know, we're required to have, and I ask the same question, like, why are we spending this much money on that? Sure. We have to. It's one of those mandates where if something were to happen and we didn't have it, um, yeah. the cost of our property and liability insurance is going to continue to climb, or the lawsuit that you might have that's indefensible. So, good questions. Alan. Uh, I didn't see it in your presentation here, but some of the other stuff I've seen online, it looked like some of the roofs were going to be up upon and replaced half of them. They go up and determine an entire roof. Of course, when we're doing our house, we're probably not replacing half of it, right? I mean, you don't generally do that. We're talking about thousands of square feet of roof, and in the inspection of those, you know, they've been over time up to this point, They've been on that schedule where half that roof may have been done 15 years ago, and this one was, the other half was only done five years ago, okay? So it's still good. So we're replacing this one that's either, it's time, the warranty's run out, and it's leaking, uh, as opposed to one that is fine. And sections of roof, it's not just, you can't imagine, it's not just one big flat roof in any of these buildings. Like at South High, you might be able to tell from the picture, there's different levels. See the different levels in the building? And there's different sections like that. Even at the elementary schools, it's the same way. So you got to think of it as it, it's a section of roof we may be doing, but there's other sections of the roof as well that are not compromised. It's a good question, though. And if you, nobody, raise your hand if you knew there were different sections of the roof, because that tells us you've been up on our roofs and you shouldn't be up on our roofs. And I, Travis will need to see you before this meeting's over. <laughs> and then obviously the two million square feet of roofing, you don't want to do them all now and then in 20 years, the next board member group and citizenry will have to come up with money to replace all the roofs at the same time. It's better to have them on the yeah. schedule. So even though we're saying we're going to do half, that's going to be over a five year period. So we stagger that cost out and basically try to create a roofing schedule, if you will, so that no one year we have to come up with. Yeah. Huge of money right. Any other questions? Thank you, everybody, for coming.